What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. So today we're going to be looking at some of the best survival worlds that are out there. These guys have put in a ton of work into their worlds and the work has paid off because there are some pretty incredible builds. We've been focusing a lot on hardcore Minecraft recently and we needed to switch it up and look at regular survival because these guys are absolutely insane. First up today we are looking at Random Walter who has one of the best worlds that I have ever seen in survival Minecraft. This entire thing is absolutely incredible and as you can see even in just these glass structures he has trees planted throughout the whole thing which just adds a very small detail but looks incredible. Of course the inside of this circle is a bunch of different biomes and then all the area is surrounded by floating islands with different biomes and builds on top of them. He of course has some pretty crazy farms in order to do this type of building. He has everything from gold farms to giant trading halls to simple mob farms. Everything that you could need for the huge building that he's currently doing. This is definitely one of the most impressive single player worlds out there especially with all the floating islands and considering he has entire buildings built out of simple gold, emerald, redstone, and lapis. Definitely a very cool person to go check out. If you want to see any of these channels, check the description down below where you're going to be able to find not only Random Walters, but everybody else that we're featuring today. And before I forget, if you enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and check out the rest of our content. Next up, we are looking at one of our fan favorites, and that is Smallish Beans, who has a pretty impressive 1400 day survival world going on currently. He releases videos about every 100 days and his world is very impressive so far even just from the storage room you can tell that he definitely has a lot going on. His most recent build was a huge deep slate mansion and it is insanely detailed and looks very good. I definitely like the final product of it. He's using it as a massive storage room and he even has an iron farm behind it as well. He's only done the front of it so far really and he's saving the back for later as he ran out of days in his uh, 100 day series. He definitely has a lot going on in other portions of his world as well. He's been doing a lot of builds across his world and it's all coming together very nicely. It always amazes me when people are able to do multiple worlds at once and Smallish Beans is of course part of Empire's SMP as well. So it's all the more impressive that he's doing these amazing builds on both of the worlds so far. If you haven't seen his Empire's build, definitely go check out his channel as well because that is one of the most interesting builds I've ever seen. Coming back to this world, we can see that this mansion is insanely cool. I really like the block palette that I used for this. He's got a lot of deep slate at the bottom, and then it moves up, and he's got, I assume, calcite in the middle, and then some purple on top, which pairs really nicely together, especially with the different woods that I use for the outline of this base. Topping it off with some pretty impressive shaped towers as well, and this is actually one of the tallest builds that he's done on this world so far. I highly recommend you go and check out his channel. Not only are his videos very well done, but he's also very entertaining to watch, especially all the builds that he's doing and the farms he's making in this survival world so far. And as you can see, the mansion wasn't his first big build. He also has this very impressive castle over here with a bridge and some windmills, farms, things like that all surrounding it. Definitely a very cool world so far and I'm very excited to see the future of it. The next world that we're looking at is Luna, a single player world built by Lobo's Garage and it is definitely the biggest single player world I have ever seen. This world has towns, castles, boats, and so much more. This world has taken years to get to the point where it's at now and it is a very impressive world to see. As he's flying around here you can see all the uh, cool little areas in this city and this very impressive build on the outside of the city as well which has an enchanting table at the top and looks very cool. The only other worlds that I have seen with this much built inside of them is Hermitcraft and that is a huge multiplayer server so the fact that Lobo's Garage went and did this all by himself makes it extremely impressive to see. It's definitely one of my favorite single player worlds and not only does it have a lot of very cool builds and things like that, it also has some lore to it which makes it even more interesting as well so I definitely recommend you go and check out his videos. Not all of them are a 3 hour world tour, he does do a lot of other videos of just his regular day to day builds and things like that. His world tour was actually 17 episodes ago so he's actually done a lot of work since then as well. So everything you're seeing now, there are some changes to it and there's a lot more going on in his world. 
This dude is also insanely underrated and only has 33,000 subscribers, which I think is a criminal offense because everything that he's got going on, he should have way more than that. So definitely go check out his channel because he deserves some major support for everything that he's done in his world so far. Not only does he have some very impressive builds in the overworld, but he's also got a lot going on in the nether. This is just one small section of his nether, and he actually has a huge nether hub and a lot more going on. Other than that, he's also got a very cool end project, which he has an enderman farm of course to get XP and ender pearls, but he built it as a floating island off the main island and used black glass as a bridge to get to it so that you really can't see the pathway. It's still very safe though and it is a survival world, so even if he dies he does get to respawn and keep working on all his insane projects. As far as Enderman farms go, this is definitely my favorite one that I've ever seen, just because everybody usually just builds some type of tower, and he went all out and built a full island to build this Enderman farm in, so that just makes it even cooler to me, and the use of instone is something I don't get to see as often as well. Next up we are looking at Dallas Med 65 and this world has a very unique twist to it. It was actually made and started on Minecraft Pocket Edition before he switched to his gaming laptop. And I think that is insanely cool because he started it all the way back when you had to build a nether reactor and he even has the remnants of that nether reactor still in this world. This world has been worked on for a very long time and it looks very impressive. He has a lot of different areas of it, including some mansions, factories, and a lot more. Definitely a very cool world to explore and he even uh, released a world download for it in the last world tour, which was actually pretty recent in episode 400. So if you want to tour this world yourself, go ahead and check out his channel and you'll be able to tour the full thing and see everything that he's built in the years that he's put into this world. This over here is his main area and he used a lot of green concrete and things like that which you don't see used too often but I really like the look of this build with the uh, multiple types of wood paired with the green concrete and glass. It all came together very cool looking and he's got an insane underground area as well which he doesn't use too often since it's it's so hard to get down there. Not too far off from all this, he has his factory and a huge wheat farm area, and we can actually look and see the uh, decayed nether reactor as well, which I think is a very cool part of his world, considering that it's actually from a very, very old pocket edition update. You could probably count with a couple hands how many worlds out there actually have this nether reactor still, so the fact that Dallas Med actually still has that in his world makes it even cooler. Next up, we are looking at Pixel Rift's 1.16 survival guide, and this was a very cool world. Of course, he's done survival guides for most of the updates, but this world in particular is very cool and he did a lot in it. He built this entire town based around a ravine because he wanted the ravine to be kind of powering everything else that was going on in the town. Over here he has his Halloween de decorations which he never took down just because he liked them so much, which is fair because I think they look really cool in this area. He also has a huge dock area and a giant boat, which is actually home to his kelp farm and a auto smelter as well. So he's actually done a great job of hiding that farm and making the whole thing look very cool and it's also a very efficient build. Speaking of which, his hot air balloon, which we've been able to see up in the sky, is also home to one of his first mob farms of the series, and I think this is a great idea for a mob farm to put it way up in the sky where the rates are going to be good, but to make it hidden and cool, he turned it into a hot air balloon, which I think is a genius idea. Pixel Rifts is actually one of the most active Minecraft YouTubers. Not only is he on Empire's SNP, but he also has a hardcore world of his own, and he actually does two podcasts as well. Not only all that, but he's also in charge of the Hermitcraft recap, which if you're missing any of the Hermitcraft episodes and want a full recap of what everybody's doing, they release a video every Friday I believe. Back to Pixel Rift's survival world, so of course he's got this huge town area but that is not it in this world. As we can see just in the distance here, we are heading over to a castle which is very cool. He used a lot of red and different block varieties in this castle. Uh, to make it extremely cool looking. Definitely one of my favorite builds on his uh, survival world. 
It's got a lot of detail with different stone and wood variants throughout the whole thing and then of course topped off with red roof. In other parts of his world he has farms of course to supply all his block and food needs. Over here was an XP and block farm, the guardian farm, where he got a lot of XP and also all the blocks that you get from this particular farm. That is all that we have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed our list of best survival worlds. If you did, be sure to drop a like on this video, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.